Welcome back, Mech 15, or not 15, Mech 2320. We're doing motor controls. We are in uh, chapter five here. We're gonna be talking about relays, contactors, and motor starters. All right, so we wanna understand the operation, and we wanna talk about the difference between a relay and a motor starter. And you guys are actually gonna be doing a lot of wiring up uh, in, uh, in your labs doing this sort of thing. So we wanna identify uh, 8 and 11 pin relays, you will also be doing those uh, in labs as well in the Future Tech Trainer uh, as well as the Amitrol Trainer, or the, uh, the 850 Trainer, okay? But we want to discuss the difference between DC and AC relay types and contactors, you know, and why, why we use those, okay? So we've done this a lot in the electrical class. We've talked about it in PLCs, all right, different things like that. So when we talk about a, a relay, okay? A relay in general is still a solenoid, right? A uh, coil of wire wrapped, and we send current through that, and that current creates the magnetic field that opens or closes the contactor. Okay, so if we look closely at this relay, all right, this one could be preset to it. This is a normally closed contactor, because you can see with the clapper, where the movable contact is connected to normally closed. All right, and when this is energized, the magnetic field pulls that armature arm down and opens the contactor up, all right? Then when the magnetic field goes away, we turn off the current, right? It's a spring return, so the armature goes back to a normally closed position. Okay, so there's, you know, just in sense, and it's the exact opposite if we have a, um, a normally uh, open relay that starts, the magnetic field, you know, uh, closes it. Okay, so we use, uh, you know, auxiliary contacts and things like that small control applications um, because they cannot handle large amounts of current in this sort of case, okay? Our electromechanical switches. We use these, uh, you know, before PLCs, you'd have a whole control cabinet, you know, just wired up with a bunch of electromechanical relays, and that would be the logic uh, as these relays open and close, okay? But these small ones are used for uh, just smaller control applications, okay? No high voltage will go through these because it will blow them. All right, so we're, we're not talking, you know, we can go maybe, the, like you look at the one picture here, right? 120, 240, uh, those type scenarios. All right, we have other types of relays that can handle larger voltages. All right, so this is a bridge type relay. All right, looks more like, you know, our motor contactors or things like that as well, okay? So when we do this, all right, the, the, the solenoid actually closes an entire plunger, and that entire plunger handles multiple contactors at once. Okay, so this is how we would handle different lines of like a three-phase uh, type motor power, those type of things, uh, as opposed to like a control logic. Okay, so remember DC is going to be more of our controls. We still have AC kind of controls, but the majority of our controls are going to be DC. You know, versus AC, that's our operating power and things like that. So we just kind of take a look at the, you know, the construction uh, of the electromagnet. Okay, so if we use DC... Okay, that's solid core materials. So that's kind of like, you know, what we did in uh, digital electronics, all right? We're using solid state, so we're using silicon, we're using chips and things like this. Uh, if we're using alternating current, we have to use um, laminated cores, okay? Those are a little bit differently because, you know, with direct current, it's on or it's off. Alternating current, uh, we're just changing states, you know, from plus to minus and that sort of thing. So then we're constantly on. All right, and we have to make sure that when we do this, we pay attention to uh, eddy currents and hysteria losses. Okay, and we'll see these in future slides as well here. And then how do we, you know, you know prevent this? We use shading coils and things like that to help prevent chatter. Uh, so that's like the clicking, constant clicking on AC. If you guys accidentally put one of the relays in wrong, you'll hear it. It's going to be like a really fast, uh, you know, chatter type signal. Um, if the it'll be the clapper opening and closing quickly on the relay. So if you remember from electrical class, we talked about eddy currents, right? Uh, it's just, you know, they're loops of currents that get, you know, stuck kind of in a circular motion, all right? And they fall in line with Faraday's law, and we talked about all that in the electrical class, all right? But these little small currents can just uh, circulate in a small uh, piece of uh, core material, okay? So then they're introduced into the metal core, and they produce power in the form of heat, all right? So we don't necessarily want those, right, because heat is bad for electronics. So we got to be very careful with this, okay? So we use, uh, and, and we use those, uh, you know, in the DCPs. Now, in the AC, okay, we use shading. 
All right, because remember, AC is constantly changing signals. It's going plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. So we don't want the solenoid to fall out, right? Because when it's on positive, you know, the solenoid will it'll close or create the magnetic field. It goes negative, and it'll change it the other way. We have to be able to control this. So we want to make sure that uh, with uh, AC that it still remains constantly on. So we use shading. All right, so that helps the magnetic field. So you can kind of see the diagram uh, begin to go here. So as current begins to rise, okay, we create that shading coil and it's creating that magnetic field. When the current reaches its maximum, okay, it uh, continues to kick on the field and then we change the field in the other direction. So we're changing the polarity so that uh, the contactor can actually stay uh, closed as we need it to as AC changes polarity. So that's really where we're using shading, okay? And, uh, you know, electromagnetic control, there's um, uh, multiple different types of control relays, okay? Most of them have sets of contacts, okay? And those contacts are normally open and normally closed. You guys are going to, you know, we have auxiliary contacts and things like that that you guys are going to wire up in some of the labs. You're going to do some relays, uh, whether we got 8-pin or 11-pin relays and how those work. Uh, we're going to focus on those in our lab. All right, but when we get back to electromagnetic construction, right, and we want to talk about solid state devices. So anytime we're talking about solid state devices, we use like semiconductors and things like that. So think of more like the chips that we use uh, when we did digital electronics and we do our breadboarding and those sort of things. All right, those are more, that's our solid state device. Okay, because we're using DC, we got things that are on and off. Okay, if we use AC, all right, we use a triac or a transistor. Okay, that allows current to flow in both directions. So we need to be able to use that because remember we're changing polarity on AC as we go positive uh, to negative. Okay, so if we take a look, so I'm sorry, I'll step back. The picture at the bottom, that's a triac. Okay, so that's our transistor piece there, uh, allowing current to flow. And uh, the picture here, right, those are the chips uh, that we used in, uh, in uh, digital electronics and things like that. So uh, we can use Optio isolation or optical isolation, so we can use light instead. Okay, so we can use light to turn things on and off as well. So, the advantage, right? No moving parts, no wear and tear, and it also helps prevent electrical noise when we're using just light. All right, there's no other control noise, there's no other power noise, and that sort of thing. All right, now we get into contactors. Okay, so very, very important for us. So, when we're you know controlling three-phase high voltage, we want to just open and close contactors, all right? We can't really use, you know, our, our PLCs to do that. We do it via contactors that open and close, and then the relay can actually handle the higher voltage. So we got two voltages involved here. We have our control voltage, all right, that tells the contactors to open and close, and then those contactors are actually delivering the power when they close, all right? So um, we'll deliver the 480 volt three-phase to the motor and that sort of thing. So very, very similar contactors to relays. Uh, they still have a coil of wire. We still, you know, put uh, current through it to make the magnetic field go off to open or close the contactor. So, so that's really, you know, and if we think back a little bit, kind of like the bridge contactor too, sort of very similar to that. But we got to make those close. And when those close, all right, we're energizing like a motor and things like that. So most of the control piece on that operates at 120 volts or less on those, okay? Um, if we take a look at uh, load contacts, okay, so why do we use this? And guys, we did some of this when we uh, when we used Adreno boards to do uh, blinking lights and things like that in electrical class, right? We we ran a separate relay because our 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 lights ran on 12 volts and our controls on 5 volts from our Adreno board. So we want to use a smaller control voltage to control higher voltage. So same kind of concept here. So when we use load contacts, right, we, we intend to connect higher current loads to a power line. And we want to use a smaller uh, control voltage, right, 24 volts with our PLC to be able to do that. We can also use vacuum contactors. Um, those are more like special type of situation when we use those. So we can switch higher voltages, all right, and narrow the space between them. And we're not going to arc as much. Okay, so that's the whole point of being in a vacuum contactor. There's really nothing for it to arc on or those sort of things. Okay, we can also use magnetic blowout coils. Um, this is to help establish a magnetic field uh, as well. 
So you can create that current as it goes through, all right, and that blow off coil, that coil of wire will give off a magnetic field so we can open or close or blast those things. Um, so that's really kind of what that's for. All right, so we can have mechanically held contactors. All right, so we can latch them, all right? So we can use uh, electromagnetics and we can operate it. So we can latch and unlatch coils. Okay, latch means, right, kind of a me uh, you know, memory place. We talked about those electronics as well. We had, you know, your SR latch, same kind of com uh, combination of things. Uh, we use uh, latches for, you know, memory, holding something in place uh, until we, like, release the power or holding something in place after the power's been released, you know, for, like, a certain amount of time. We can also use sequencing operation, okay? So it uh, clears the contacts and it allows for continuous power to be supplied to the coil after it's energized. Okay, that's kind of like a, the sealing logic that we did in PLC class and things like that. Okay, so if we take a look at like a latching type of relay, notice that we have what? Latch and unlatch. So they're going to have opposite uh, contactors, right? One will be normally closed, one will be normally open. That way they will always be uh, opposites of each other as we go through there. Okay. So motor starter is very important. All right, we do the same thing with motor starters, right? We want to use a PLC to start a motor. So we want to use our contactors. Well, that's PLC is low voltage, right? 24 volts. Your motor's 480 volt, three phase, really high current. So we use motor starters instead to do that. All right, it's really just a relay contactor. So when we send the control signal from the PLC, right, it sends the current through the wire, the wire. Uh, creates the magnetic field, the solenoid type scenario, right? And it's really just the magnetic relay, right? And it closes the contactors so the motor starts, okay? But it's very important that we have different motor starters, okay? Um, they're all going to receive like the 24 volt control signal from the PLC, but we have to make sure that we size uh, the motor starters in particular to their rated horsepower. And we have to do the wire size in conjunction with the amount of current that that motor is going to draw as well. All of those guidelines are in the National Electric Code. There's a huge table that you go through, all right? So we can look, you know, and see, like, you know, what a 20-horsepower motor uh, starter size should be. And you have to buy the right starter size for that because everything is rated, uh, you know, based on, like, you know, current and those sort of things um, and different voltage sizes. So that's, that's important, but that's not something that you have to calculate. That's something that you have to follow in the NEC, the National Electric Code. Okay, and that's where, you know, NEMA and IEC come in. We have standards and ratings and that sort of thing, and they're all kind of in conjunction with the uh, NEC code. All right, so we have motor starters still continuing here, all right, but they're combination starters, so we can use those mounted in special enclosures. Uh, remember, it just kind of depends on the environment that we have. You know, sometimes we don't even put those at the motor. All right, we're going to get into what a motor control center is. We call them, in industry, we call them MCCs, all right, motor control center. So it's literally, you know, we had them in portables. So there would be like a portable outside the building. And you'd walk in there and it just looks like a bunch of, uh, like a locker room with a bunch of different size lockers. And inside each one, all right, are the different starters for the different motors. And then the, the control cable comes in from the control panel and then the power cable goes out so that the motors turn on and off. Okay, so all of those are based on, in the starters, based on current requirements uh, and voltage requirements and those sort of things. Like I said, that all depends on uh, NEC code that you have to follow. So the right wire size, the right starter size. Oh, sorry, skipped ahead there for a second. All right, so that kind of wraps it up. Um, what you should do, though, is uh, look up uh, an MCC motor control center. It's, they're, they're actually pretty cool. I know that uh, they exist in a lot of places in industry, he, even your Walmart that runs like your, your all their air conditioning and things like that. You, you generally centralize you know, all the starters in one place. It's easier to work on. You don't actually have to physically go out to the motor and, and do those sort of things. So it, um, I have another slide. I think I... I uh, posted those PowerPoints for you uh, online so that you could actually see them and uh, you can see there's a picture on the on the other uh, PowerPoint that has a picture of a uh, MCC so you can see what that looks like but uh, as usual guys uh, email me let me know if you got any questions if we got a team meet zoom meet any of those sort of things else guys have a great day I'll see you in class